Every fucking time! Every goddamn fucking time! Hello friends, my name is Brandon Dayton, I am your humble narrator, and welcome to part number three of my competitive Pokemon building guide. Uh, part one was building a baby, part two was building a team. This will be part number three, the advanced strategies and tactics, hopefully you can apply these and dominate your opponent. So, in the current Pokemon metagame, there are a lot of key components to advanced battling. Before the fight even starts, you can endlessly theorize about your opponent's strategy due to the inclusion of a team preview window. Caesar will come in with a priority bullet punch just like the Undertaker's known to try a choke slam. Take this opportunity to identify various walls, sweepers, or leads and pick your strategy accordingly. Picking the correct Pokemon to counter their lead is vital, since a smart lead Pokemon can instantly grab the momentum of a battle, either by directly countering the opponent or scaring them into a making a poor move. Even an early switch can be an advantage due to the opponent needing to pa basically pass the turn to do so, provided the opposing Pokemon doesn't carry a move that can damage and switch. U-Turn and Volt Switch have become re a renowned combo lovingly dubbed Volt Turn that allows momentum to be carried even while switching. Momentum is absolutely vital to understand in battling and can best be defined as preventing opportunities for your opponent while also pushing your team's ob objective forward. Momentum starts in team building. Every member of the team needs to contribute towards roughly the same goal. Offensive momentum is obviously the easiest to quantify, but not all members of an offensive team have to strap on a choice item and attempt to smash the opponent's face in. That strategy is known as hyper offense, and if you can slam the opponent before they're able to regain their composure, it does offer a high risk, high reward type of gameplay that can either win a game or lose a game extremely quickly. Balanced teams will generally have a wall or two, and perhaps even a utility Pokemon to set up or get rid of entry hazards or even pass boosts to a team member. Teams with a more defensive objective tend to wear the opponent down through controlling statuses and entry hazards. There are Pokemon, as, such as the previously mentioned Caesar, that can clean up entire teams after one sword stance. Let's look at the team I constructed in my past two videos. Blissey is a common switch for me that Caesar will inevitably see as an opportunity to set up in my face. You cannot take a passive role in a Pokemon battle. Caesar is moving towards his objective, and due to Blissey's passive build, there isn't much I'm able to do, so a switch must occur promptly upon spotting the incoming trouble. Caesar will inevitably get his sword stance because I am switching, but my team is well built. Duo Blade, Electivire, and Blastoise all resist Caesar's Steel-type attacks. Electivire is a powerful sweeper, like Rey Mysterio or something, but he lacks the defense to stop Caesar the Undertaker. Duo Blade is like Yokozuna, he can resist both the Bug and Steel-type attacks, but he lacks the power of his own and basically requires a Swords Dance or two to pack enough of a punch to clear Caesar out of the way. Setup Wars are the worst thing to get into, so the most prudent switch would be into Blastoise. Not only does my Blastoise have a defensive build, physically defensive build, but water resists steel, I've also set my Blastoise up with Haze to remove nasty stat-ups, and Scald can be used to fish for a burn that'll shut Caesar down for the rest of the match. If the opponent has a Blastoise counter remaining, you might find yourself stuck in a switching war. Let's say that Electrovire is dead. Sorry Electrovire, but I see the weaknesses in my team, and he usually is. <laughs> His true purpose is to make the opponent scared of using electric moves, similar to how Gogo does make to make the opponent think twice about using grass attacks. They are the perfect partners for Blastoise. Anyways, Electrovire is down, and the opponent sends out uh, Mega Ampharos to deal with my Blastoise. Mega Ampharos gains a Dragon Typing, which makes it a perfect teammate to cover Caesar's fire weakness. Since Blastoise is a physical defender with a supporting moveset, he stands no chance against a special electric attack. Electivire is gone, and Blissey is the switch to make, but the opponent will e inevitably send up the Caesar again to set up on her. This is where we can implore the art of double switching, another high risk, high reward strategy that can easily turn the tides of momentum. Double switching is exactly what it sounds like. You switch twice to counter their counter and maintain the momentum of your team. Bring in the Blissey to thwart any thundery doom that may be done to Blastoise and then switch immediately back into Blastoise. If the Scissor tries to come in to take advantage of the Blissey, he will be met with the threat he switched earlier to avoid. But if he calls your bluff or is simply an inexperienced battler, you might be left in a worse position than you were in beforehand. Be aware of this tactic being used on you, as a smart opponent won't hesitate to take advantage of any patterns that develop within the battle. 
Obviously, the more metagame knowledge you have, the easier it is to decipher what the opponent will try next. This leads to competitive battles being played at least one or two turns ahead of what is actually happening. Playing dumb is generally a halfway viable option during high level battles as well though. I'll, j I'll try to play it straight generally until I spot a point where I know I can gain the upper hand and keep it. Often opponents will reveal a trump card Pokemon with an amazing moveset only to be shut down entirely because they didn't simply wait until a certain threat or two was cleared out of the way. Again, this is why the team preview window is so critical. Some moves seem extremely dumb, until you look a little bit deeper. Let's say I have a Garchomp out, and a Mega Charizard X in reserve. My opponent's rocking a Magnezone and a Latios as his last two Pokemon. Magnezone's out with a Choice Scarf and just knocked out Hulk Hogan with a Flash Cannon. I switch into my low health Garchomp and threaten to KO with er Earthquake, but will actually use Dragon Claw in order to wreck the Latios if he decides to switch in. If Magnezone stays in despite the inev almost inevitable Earthquake, Garchomp will likely die, but I will get a free switch into Mega Charizard X. This free switch is known as the Switch Advantage. With the Switch Advantage, my Mega Charizard can easily come in and Dragon Dance to win the game with Flare Big Blitz on Magnezone and Outrage on Latios. Had I simply gone for the Earthquake, Latios would not only avoid any damage with his Levitate ability, but he would also be able to easily outspeed and KO both of my remaining Pokemon with Draco Meteor. Had I simply gone with Earthquake in this situation, the most straight out move, inevitably I would have lost the match, but since I decided to play it a little dumb, <laughs> and go for the Dragon Claw, it might have been smart, depending on what the opponent does. High risk, high reward. Switch advantage is extremely important in high level matches. Instead of simply letting team members fate, attempt to soak up the damage with something that is able to resist or soak it up. The low health Pokemon you save can then be used as fodder for a sweet free switch on a crucial Pokemon. Using this method of sacrifice ensures you take full advantage of any Pokemon that faints. We talked earlier about moves that allow you to damage and switch, but with a low health Pokemon, the Volt Turn combo can be thwarted. Bringing in some fodder on a Volt Turn will force your opponent to finish the switch, which then allows you to see his chosen Pokemon before picking your own. This simple tactic can be used to easily turn the tides of a battle in your favor. Moves like Volt Turn and Substitute truly do deserve a video of their own, but we will talk briefly about a few of the more interesting move choices. Baton Pass fits nicely with Volt Turn because aside from passing stats, you can use what's called a Dry Pass in order to scout for a switch, which will leave you with the advantage, albeit without inflicting any actual damage. Substitute sacrifices 25% of your health to be invested in a decoy. This can be used to subvert any status ailment or debuff provided the opponent doesn't have the Infiltrator ability. I have a Kangaskhan build that works wonderfully with Substitute. 212 HP EVs, that stands for effort values covered in part 1 of this series, will give a Kangaskhan 404 HP. Why is that relevant? Well, setting up a substitute with 101 HP means that it can't be broken in one hit by moves that hit based on level, like Seismic Toss. This bulky substitute can be paired with the fighting type move Focus Punch. Focus Punch has 150 base attack, compared to the 110 of the well-feared Hydro Pump. But any damage will break your focus and cause the attack to fail. However, sitting safely behind the substitute, Kangaskhan can devastate any Pokemon that might switch in to save him from a seismic tossing Chansey. <laughs> Kangaskhan also has an ability called Scrappy, which allows him to nail ghost types, so nothing is safe from his focus punching wrath. One of my favorite movesets, for sure. Substitute can also be used to safely boost stats or even simply reduce your own HP in preparation for Pain Split. Pain Split is a wonderful move that adds both Pokemon's HP together and then divides it evenly between the battlers. This means high HP Pokemon like Snorlax are absolutely devastated, and the Pain Split user generally ends up almost fully healed. We glanced over boosting moves like Sword Stance and Nasty Plot, but there are moves that will add defense and even do both at the same time, such as Bulk Up and Calm Mind. Psych Up can be used to steal an opponent's stat boost if they aren't behind a substitute, and there are a variety of moves such as Roar, which can be used to switch opponents out entirely whether they are behind a substitute or not. This will also reset any stat boosts. Endless weather in Generation 5 led to weather wars, but with less people taking advantage of weather these days, it is much easier to set up a team powered by sun, rain, snow, or sand and dominate your opponent. Setting up weather can easily take the momentum away from your team but the idea is to use the boost to climb back up and over your rival. Weather isn't the only setup available either. Trick Room is 
a move that allows slower Pokemon to move first, which means your team can invest their speed into bulk at the cost of moving last every time Trick Room goes down. Entry hazards like Stealth Rocks and Spikes can whittle away the health of an opponent immediately on switching in. Toxic Spikes can inflict status and really reduce the longevity of teams that rely on defensive tactics. Sticky Web is a brand new ability in Generation 6 that allows you to reduce the speed of your opponent one stage upon switching in, which means even the fastest sweepers will become manageable. All the entry hazards in the world can be undone in one move if you pack a Pokemon with Rapid Spin. Defog is a move that will also remove entry hazard, but it will take out even the ones you've set up, so try to resist unless your Stealth Rock user is still alive. Finally, Reflect and Light Screen are moves that will cut physical and special attack power against your team in half. This is a great way to get a Pokemon set up, or just buy more time for toxic damage to rack up. Unfortunately, the these are also removed by Defog. If it hasn't become completely apparent, metagame knowledge is at the forefront of any Pokemon Master's mind. You need to understand what each move does and hopefully come up with your own ideas on how to capitalize on that. There are plenty of generic builds readily available on Smogon, but creating a novel team will usually have your opponent at a loss for what your next move will be, and this becomes more and more important as you fight people who are out to win and take your badge or whatever. Do you do your research, theorize some movesets, and try to keep your opponent guessing and off balance as much as possible. With your hopefully newfound knowledge of switch advantage, momentum, double switching, hazard control, interesting moves, and prediction, your old pal Dayton has 100% faith that you can conquer any 12 year old unwitting enough to challenge your endless poker prowess. I truly hope you've enjoyed this series, friend. This final video has been a long time coming, and I've tried to pack it with as much knowledge as I can despite my lack of first class visuals. Listening comprehension is a true talent. I hope to nerd out with some of you in the comments about poke theories, and I hope you want to get to poke like or poke subscribe. I'd also like to give a big thanks to the Arnold's Play for suggesting this series, and I hope to continue it at some point in the future with a moveset video that I briefly mentioned earlier. Anyways friends, I've been Brandon Dayton, your humble narrator, and before I say bye bye I just wanted to thank one more person, he's always there for me, even when I screw up, and his name is...